Hi. Hi. I got it. Can, you, can everyone see me okay? All right. I'm just going to take that as a yes. Um, can we good? Can you see the, the video? So <clears throat> today we're just going to focus on how do we create a colored sketch on the iPad. Uh, this little presentation was uh, made specifically for um, CNU and for the art room today. And let me just start. This is a video, so it's going to play. Um, we've got about a 12 minute video here and we're starting out in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. The, the office is down in Lawrenceville and it's a great urban environment. And I just went out one day just to get some photographs and we're just shooting down the street. This was done um, about a week ago and it was the first day that restaurants were open. And I think this is a great little spot right here, taking a look at composition. We're going to use, if you wait long enough, the right composition comes along. Uh, here's the drawing that was done from the photograph. Uh, we're going to use that drawing in the colorization process, uh, which we'll see in just a minute here. If I can, I'd like to give you a quick tip. This is, uh, if you're shooting on your iPhone, you have the, the wide angle lens, zoom out a little bit. Um, somewhere around a, a 0.7 to 0.8 um, gives you a little bit more breathing room on the left and right hand sides. Uh, of your drawing so and of course no great drawing is done without a great cup of coffee this is espresso mono so we're all geared up um, we're going to head back to the office here and we're going to start our coloring but before we get going um, this is an ipad it's a 12.9 inch screen we use a app called procreate it's 9.99 uh, it'll be the best ten dollars you spent so we're here we're in procreate the drawing's done quick little setup thing most of the drawings are done at 4,800 by 2,700 pixels. The brushes are sized for that. So here's our drawing. Our step one, um, if you don't have the brushes already loaded or colors or anything, um, a, a really great way to load things in is through Dropbox. Uh, the iPad makes it really easy. Um, if you want these things, they're going to be available for download later. Um, but let's load up the brush set, and you can just drag it right in and it imports your brushes, it's, it's really that easy. I, it's, it's amazing, I love it. So let's load up some color swatches. I find it very easy to sample colors to use in your coloring. Um, it, it, it makes the process pretty straightforward. Uh, you don't have to question what, where, you know, and where, what colors you're using. You just wanna move it off the screen a little bit. And then there's just one last piece here. And this is um, pretty much key, is that we're gonna load this texture layer in on our file and we're done with Dropbox. we get rid of that guy. And if you click on the little N, you wanna set this texture layer to overlay. This is like really great stuff here, this texture layer, and it wants to be below the line layer. I'm just gonna rename it, rename it texture. And so once we got the brushes and once we got uh, the texture in there, we got our colors in there, Here's our brush set. We're only going to be using three brushes today, um, a soft one, a hard one, and a speckled brush. So won't be too complex. Uh, really none of the color process is really that complex. So our step two, once we get everything loaded, is painting in the background. So we're going to make a new layer here. And we're just going to color it background. And we're going to go to our brushes. And we're going to take, here's our brush set that we loaded. We're going to take the nice, big, soft, round brush. And we're just going to sample the lightest color and this is our background wash. This is what you would do if you were painting traditionally. Um, you want to create a center of light in the middle. So you're going to use different values and just sort of brush it in darker as you get to the outside. And maybe it's a little bit too dark over there. We'll just lighten it up a little bit. So that's our base color. And everything is going to be, all of our other layers are going to sit on top of this. Our step three, we're going to make a new layer. And we're going to label it people and we're gonna paint in people, cars, tables, and we're just gonna use a white color. And you might have to resize your brush just a little bit. And we're gonna speed this up here. Uh, we're just gonna fill in, we're just blocking out the shapes here. And you can already start to see just by adding in this white back in that the, that the image is starting to take shape. I'm gonna fill in a little bit of white, a little bit in these people. And you know, because it's on its own layer, you don't have to be super 
particular. So our step four, we're gonna make another layer and we're gonna call it trees. And we're gonna use the greens and, and the yellow in our color palette. Again, we're gonna use just the hard round brush. And we're gonna start with the mid value. I'm gonna call it sap green. And we're just gonna color in this tree here. And this is, this is fun, you know, at this point the drawing's done and we're just trying to add some color into this. If anyone's interested, uh, I do have my iPad set up here. If you have questions at the end or whatever, I can answer some stuff specifically uh, about that. And so you wanna grab a little burnt sienna, paint it in a tree trunk. Again, just flat color right now at this point. So, and here's a little, here's, do this, right? alpha, alpha lock. If you click on your layer and you select alpha lock, it will only put color on where there's already paint. So where there's already pixels, so you can, do your base color in there and then go in with a little lighter color with that speckly brush and add a highlight, add a little bit of dark in there. These things are gonna be subtle, but it's the accumulation of the subtlety that sort of pulls off the effect. And if anyone's wondering, this, this whole color process uh, from start to finish was about 10, 15 minutes. Um, so we're gonna just add a couple little extra little darks in here. We turned off the alpha lock on the layer. Step five, we're gonna do another new layer and we're gonna paint all the local color in on the, on the buildings and on the glass. We're just gonna color, call the layer color. And we do have our sample palettes, but if you didn't wanna use the sample color palettes, uh, you could you know, certainly select your own. We colored the sky in, we're using the same blue in the sky as in the glass. Um, put a nice white on the trim, and there's two colors, three colors for the brick. Um, you do one for the light side, one for the dark side. Um, and again, we're just using the round brush and just blowing in simple color. And the best part of any painting is uh, holding off to do the shadow work. And so um, you're gonna do your shadows, you're gonna make a new layer, and it's gonna be called shadows. And if you click on this end again, you wanna set that layer to multiply. So, and then you're gonna use this little bluish purpley color and we're gonna use our hard round brush and we're gonna paint in shadows. And anytime an object touches the ground, you wanna put a shadow in there. And on the side of an object, you wanna put a shadow in here. And we're, and we're moving quickly, but we're being sort of accurate of where we're placing those shadow shapes. I'm gonna run it down the side of this tree and where are the, where, are the shadows, where do the shadows live? You know, we want to put some shadows in the foreground, the shadows across the building here and on, underneath the mullions. And just going to add darks to help your eye dance across this image. And there's shadows in the background. You're trying to get foreground the background to recede. And the shadows in the glass. Where, wherever shadows want to live, that's where you want to put them. And once we get all of our shadows uh, put in here, we're gonna turn back on that alpha lock guy, right? And we're gonna go and pick up our big spatter brush. And what we wanna do is get a bright orange color. And we're gonna blow orange back in these shadows and it's gonna just like breathe life into this. When you're, if you were painting this, you would, you would pick your, red, your oranges and your purples and you do it all at once. But in this case, we're blowing bright color back into the shadows. And again, it's subtle, but it's the accumulation of all of these subtle techniques that we're gonna do in there. So we're gonna do one more layer and we're gonna call it overlay. And we're gonna add, we're gonna push brightness into the center of the image. So um, we're gonna take a bright sort of orangey color and we're using our speckled brush and um, right here, it's gonna get brighter. Maybe it's not quite right, you can adjust your color a little bit, but you can see that the you're, you're the composition, the lines, the color, the value are all directing you directly into the center of the image. And I think this guy needs a, a little foreground shadow, so we're gonna make another layer. We're gonna set it to multiply again. And we're gonna try to pick up a nice little blue color. I'm gonna pull it back off of our palette here. And there's the blue. And let's just add a little bit of darkness. It's, it's sort of like a, a vignette. Um, again, you're pushing the darkness around the outside and the lightness is going towards the center. So you're, you're you know, you're reinforcing 
value shift, color shift, temperature shift. And we're gonna do one more layer of dark. So when you paint a watercolor, you paint light to dark. And so one of our last things here is just gonna set the layer to multiply. And we're gonna, you know, because because we lighten it up, we, we lost some of the density of those darks. So we're gonna go back in there and just um, touch it up. We're gonna, we're adding flavor, we're adding uh, active strokes so your eye can look around this image and, and help define what the forms are. And every once in a while, you know, you, if you want to add some uh, darker shapes in the glass, it, you, you want a variety of small to large and soft, the hard edge. It's all of those things. There's no watercolor brush that I found that works like a watercolor brush in Site Appropriate. So we're sort of mimicking traditional painting methods because we, we have a knowledge in our head of like, what does a watercolor look like? Well, we're trying to sort of recreate that a little bit here. And um, I'm gonna turn off the alpha lock on our shadow layer and I'm just gonna, we're just gonna paint a little bit more into here. I'm trying to soften the edges a little bit. And let's see, is there anything else we need to do? So you like stop and you pause and we need to add a little bit more active strokes across this, the, 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 the road in here. And it looks I'm looking a little plain, a little boring. And, and once you do that, um, you can pour, pull it into the sidewalk a little bit. And again, you're leading your eye across the image. So here's a, the shadow starts on the left, goes across behind, and then your eye understands and, and, and creates layer and, cre and pushes objects forward. And I think we're almost done here. And I'm looking at this guy and I'm saying to myself, uh, self, well, let's just soften some of these edges. So we've got a little hard edge, we've got a little soft edge, and, and I think we're done here. And the video's almost over. So this is it. This is the final image. And I had a lot of fun creating it. Uh, I, I, I really appreciate anyone coming to take a look at it. If you want the download files or anything, uh, you can go to depiction.com slash tutorials. Uh, the video will actually be posted in a couple hours once, once everything gets composited. But thank you so much. And if you have questions, um, again, I got my iPad live. So if you, want, if you want to do something, please feel free to reach out. James, I think I can't hear you. You're on mute there, but. Hey, hey, Joe. Hey, oh, yeah. I hope you can hear me now. Yeah, always wonderful seeing your work. Thank you so much. That was fantastic. Thank Excellent. You. Excellent. Thank you. I saw a couple of questions come in for you on the Q&A, and so if, let's uh, see if we have time for those at the very end. Um, uh, Peter, let's go ahead and take it away. Thanks. Thank you.